Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Easy SAP ABOP. We are going through the series ABOP Objects for Java Developers. So over the course of the past few videos, I've showed you very basics on ABOP Objects. I've showed you how to create and define classes, how to create static methods, aka class methods, in uh, the public section, protected section, private section. I've showed you how to implement these methods and just a few basics on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I want to do today is I want to show you how to create methods similar to what you've got in Java. So let's say a uh, public string, uh, get string, and then we'll just say return this dot some string. So we need to actually analyze this method in Java. Let's actually turn on syntax highlighting just to make things a little prettier. What we're creating, and make this a little bigger, is this method that returns a string called get string, and it just returns some private data. So let's create something like this in ABOP. So I'm going to say class. I'll just call it local class report definition in class, and then create the implementation. So this is going to mirror this Java method. So you know, assume there's a class actually surrounding this. We'll just call it class test. And then here, we're going to be returning this private string, some string. This will get set somewhere or another. I'm not really too uh, worried about going into this detail because if you're a Java developer, you know what, what's going on here. So this string is going to be set by something, maybe the constructor or uh, an external program is going to call a public method that sets this private variable. But this get string method is going to return this dot some string. So to mirror this in ABOP, we need a public section method. Let's just say it is a regular method, get string. And then in the private section, we have some data just say data Oop, I forgot to do this here private section data some data or what do we call it here in Java let's be consistent some string get string and some string type string so in our actual implementation to order in order to implement this method we're gonna say method get string and then in order to have this return type string, we need to use the keyword returning value, and then in parentheses, the name of the value. So I'll just say ret for return underscore string type string. And so what this is saying is we have a method get string that returns the value ret string, but returning parameters always have to be passed back by value so you can't say this method is going to take in this value manipulate it and then return it that's not a returning parameter a returning parameter has to pass back a parameter by value not by reference and a returning parameter must be statically typed so let's go ahead and implement this method get string and then we'll just say ret underscore string equals sum underscore string in method. So this is the exact same implementation here, except for our class is called test, and here it's called LCL report. We've created private data string, named it sum string. Here we've named it sum underscore string. We've created a method of return type string called get string. We've done the same thing here. We say returning value ret string type string. So it's going to return. This is just the returning name. We have to actually set the, the value that's going to be returned in the method here. So now in Java, we might have public void because it's not going to return anything. Set string. And then we'll just say of type string a string. And I can tell right now this is going to be too zoomed in. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. So set string 
in our method here, we're going to say this dot, what is it, sum string equals a string. I am mixing my syntax here, guys. So um, that's, that's what you get when you work in multiple languages. You mix up syntax. You put a period instead of a semicolon and vice versa. So we say set string. So let's create this method now too. Methods set underscore string importing. Let's just call it I underscore string, which is kind of a, a common thing we do. If it's an importing parameter, we'll prefix it with I. This just makes it easier for developers to find these. I'm importing I string type string. Then we'll create our method implementation. Method set underscore string in method. And what we'll say is our private data sum underscore string equals our importing parameter I underscore string. So basically what this, this class is going to do, it's going to exactly mirror this class here. We create an instance of test. We can call these instance methods set string and get string and we should be able to get some data. So what I'm going to do here in my ABAP program is I start a selection and I'll say data um, OBJ for no, just object. We're just going to be very generic here. Type ref2 because we're referencing a class. LCL report. We're going to create object OBJ. This is the same as calling the constructor in Java. So it'd be like if we were in another class in Java because everything's going to be in a class. We'll just say class. Um, let's call it report. This would be the same as doing um, report. This would be the same as doing this. So we're just creating an instance of the class. And what we're going to do is we're going to call test test equals new test. We're going to say test dot set string. Pass in some value. And then we're going to say print. test.get string so we're going to mirror this in ABAP where we create an instance of this test class we call the instance method set string pass in our parameter it's a little more formal over here in ABAP we're going to actually say it's an importing parameter in Java we just pass it in the parentheses no need to specify what kind of parameter it is and then in our print line method, we're going to call test.getString and print whatever we set. So let's do the same thing in ABAP. So now I'll say obj set string. Since there's one importing parameter, I don't have to specify the name. If there were multiple, I'd have to say i string equals and then you know whatever the value is. We could do it that way, but the common way to do it if there's only uh, one is to say some value. We don't have to pass in. I can go ahead and check this. Everything's good. And then let's create a just a local variable here. I'll just call it LV value type string. And I'll say LV value equals object get underscore string. And then what I'll do, I'll just write out some text. saying our string and then print out the value of string. So what's going to happen, we're going to set the string value, then we're going to get it from the class and we're going to print it out. So if we check this, we'll go ahead and activate it. Now that it's active, we can run it and we get the output, our string, some value. So we're simply printing out the value that we set in this class. So I could change this from some value to uh, some other text, hello, abop, and then run it. And our expected output is now going to be hello, abop. And that's what we get. Our string is hello, abop. So this pretty much sums up how we do 
a returning value, an importing value, and uh, just basic return types as compared to Java and ABOP. So, you know, technically this wouldn't even be inside of any of this. In ABOP, we have this initialization, the start of selection, these events. So we could just, you know, in here say, this will run globally. So this, this code will run, which mirrors this code right here. But in Java, of course, we need a class to run it in. We'd actually run this inside a main method or something like that, probably. So we'd have, you know, public class, whatever, uh, public static void main, and this would run inside our main method. It's the same thing as doing starter selection down here. So that's uh, a little bit more insight into how object-oriented programming works in ABAP. Um, it's, you know, ABAP as a language is kind of moving away from procedural programming to you know more of this uh, ABAP object oriented programming so you are going to see some things here where they try to bridge the gap where you've got this this event that is going to call you know some object oriented code but we could have an object oriented transaction say for example in public section here we'll have class methods main and then in our implementation down here We'll implement method main. And in method main, what we might do is say data local object instance type ref2 LCL report. And then we'll say create object LO instance. And then we can call our instance methods here set string some string hello instance we can call other instance methods here get string and then print out the result down here or write result down here so essentially what we can do is we don't have to have any of these events we can have a completely encapsulated ABOP objects object oriented class and then create a transaction let's just show you an example of that so we've got this save let's go ahead and Actually, let's let's do this for real, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Data LV result type string LV result equals our get string result, and then I'll say write our string LV result. So this is going to be the same thing as before. We're going to get the same output. We get this output some string, but something's got to call this main method since we're not calling it in this report uh, this report source code here. So what we need to do is actually create a trans. So this is z abop 3 Let me just copy this so I remember that. Let's go to transaction se ninety three so we can create a transaction. I'll say z o o three create a transaction. I'll say abop objects transaction. And typically you'd be creating a denpro transaction where you're calling a module pool program or a selection screen program. Let's do method of a class. So an OO transaction, this is an object oriented transaction. So we'll go ahead and uncheck OO transaction model. The class name is going to be LCL report. The method is going to be method main and it's local in program Z ABOP 003. Go ahead and just check this since I know it's going to run on Windows. We can check our transaction here. And then if we test our transaction or let's go ahead and save this as a local object since we're not going to transport it. Now in the transaction bar I can say Z003. Well, Z003 SC93 something's going on here. I'm running LCL report method main of this. I should be getting the output. Let's go to SE38, Z ABOP003. Method main of LCL report. Method main should. Oh, I think it's because we can't use write statements in ABOP objects anymore. So let's just say message LV result type I. So there, there's some caveats here, guys. In ABAP objects, you can't necessarily 
have these deprecated statements. So now we'll say Z003 and we get our output, some string as a message. So that's one thing also to look out for guys. Some things are not supported in ABAP objects that were supported in classical reporting. Uh, the right statement being one of them. In ABAP objects, it's just not gonna do anything as you saw you know, previously when we tried to run this before we uh, introduced this message type I over here. So that's how we create an ABAP objects report. That's how we define returning parameters. This is again in Java, the returning, this is the part of the method definition. So whenever we say returning value here, we're saying returning value ret string in Java. This is the same thing as saying return a string. And then in the method, you return the actual value, which is ret string here in ABAP. But in Java, we don't have to specify the name of it. So that's one more lesson for you Java folks out there. Hopefully this makes your life, um, you know, programming in ABAP a little more easy. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to leave a comment. Shoot me an email. I'll make a video, hopefully to answer your questions. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.